Hi, I'm Heidi Toby, Director of Social Work Programs at Therapist Development Center. If you're a first time viewer and looking to pass your social work or MFT licensing exam, or just interested in topics relevant to clinical social work and psychotherapy, you've come to the right place. If you like it, be sure to subscribe for updates. You can also sign up for our complete LMSW, LCSW, and MFT exam prep programs by going to our website at therapistdevelopmentcenter.com or click on our logo. Today's topic, NASW Code of Ethics Revisions, Part 1. The NASW recently published revisions to the Social Work Code of Ethics. While minor in terms of how this will impact the exam, more on that later, these revisions are crucial to our field. These changes to the Code of Ethics fall into two main categories, self-care and cultural competency. This week's blog discusses the updates regarding self-care, and our upcoming blog will discuss updates regarding cultural competency. Self-care. I am so glad to see self-care added to the Code of Ethics. Self-care mutually benefits both clinicians and their clients by promoting personal and professional well-being. Our profession is one with high levels of stress, making the importance of self-care critical. This addition to the Code of Ethics recognizes the importance of this personally and professionally and makes self-care the standard for best practice. It stresses the importance of self-care in our profession and lays a foundation for upholding our commitment to engaging in ethical practice. All the way from social work educational institutions to social work organizations and agencies, we as social workers are being called to promote policies and practices to support social workers' self-care. It's exciting to think about the ways this could impact everything from our agencies to graduate school programs. It's important to highlight the heart behind this particular change to the Code of Ethics. The NASW uses very specific language here. This is about encouragement, not force. So what does this mean? These standards are about encouraging all social workers to engage in self-care practices, but it's not about trying to force things. It's not about being punitive or punishing those who struggle to engage in this practice. Self-care professional. Professional self-care is about preventing professional impairment and subsequent harm to clients and promoting competence, compassion, and ethical practices. A lack of self-care can lead to everything from negative perceptions of the field to a decrease in work productivity to professional negligence or ethical infractions. Professional self-care can be promoted through practices such as professional development, engaging in reflective practice, workload management, time management, and much more. Self-care personal. The goal here is to prevent and treat illness and to promote wellness and well-being. Social workers should engage in practices promoting personal well-being. These could include everything from exercising to meditating and engaging in personal mindfulness practices to engaging in hobbies to pursuing personal health to maintaining boundaries personally and so much more. So how does this impact the exam? Good news. These changes, while incredibly important to the profession, are unlikely to impact the exam. Here's why. Cultural competence and self-care are already included on the exams and therefore in TDC's programs as well. The exam is more all-encompassing than just the code of ethics and the exam content outlines already include both self-care and cultural competency. Thanks so much for listening. Remember, if you're studying for your exam and looking for the best LMSW, LCSW, or MFT exam prep program, please visit our website at therapistdevelopmentcenter.com to sign up. With a 95% pass rate, we offer the best study system on the market to help you pass your exam with confidence. Here at TDC, we're with you until you pass.